Welcome back to another video everyone. First of all, I just want to say really quick, Happy New Year, and I'm going to be doing something I've been holding off on for months now, and that is doing another park ranking video where I rank all of the roller coasters in a given park from worst to best in my opinion. Today I am talking about King's Dominion, a wonderful Cedar Fair Park in Doswell, Virginia that has lots of charm and natural beauty, along with a pretty solid collection of roller coasters. Before beginning, I am just going to mention quick that I have updated my channel with a new look for 2020 thanks to Zach at Theme Park Media. I think he did a terrific job and it looks great. Be sure to leave your thoughts and let's get into the worst and best of King's Dominion. Coming in at the number 12 spot is Great Pumpkin Coaster. Great Pumpkin Coaster is just your Typical ENF Myler Industries kitty coaster just has a regular oval layout, eight foot tall hill. I did actually try to get this credit, but I walked up to the station. There was literally nobody in the area. It was right before park closing, and I waited a good at least 30 seconds before the operator of the ride turned around, saw me, and unenthusiastically said, You need to have a kid to ride this. So she denied me this credit. So I missed out on the Great Pumpkin Coaster. Moving on to the number 11 spot, which is Anaconda, the Aerodynamics Custom Looping Coaster that opened in 1991. This ride is often referred to by many enthusiasts as one of the worst coasters out there. I got three rides on this, and personally, I didn't find it to be that outright terrible. I just thought it was really boring, lots of pointless transitions, and it did beat you around a little bit, but I didn't find it super uncomfortable. Uh, I just thought it was not that great of a ride. Very, very mediocre. It's pretty cool looking how the first drop goes underwater, but besides looking at it and taking pictures, there's not really anything great about this ride. I think Anaconda's days are numbered personally. I don't think it's going to last any more than like three or four more years. Apple Zapple is a Mock Rides Wild Mouse Coaster. This is just pretty typical for a Wild Mouse. It just has some of the tight hairpin turns. It has like one or two bigger drops and that's it. I honestly wish I could say more about this ride. I think it looks fantastic how they have given it the new color scheme and they renamed it Apple Zapple. It used to be called Ricochet from 2002 to 2017. So the Apple Zapple name and color scheme is pretty new. I think it looks great. It really just does nothing. It's not even one of the better wild mouses I've been on. Moving on. At number 9, I have the PTC Woodstock Express, which opened in 1974. Now, these Woodstock Express PTC wooden coasters are pretty common. There are several clones of these, and they're just good kitty coasters, honestly. I don't ride them any more than once when I go to the park. I ride them to get the credit, but they are very good kitty coasters. Not really any airtime or anything. I'm glad these parks still have them, because they're so much better than most of the kitty coasters out there, in my opinion. Number 8 is Backlot Stunt Coaster, which opened in the Paramount days. This opened in 2006 as Italian Job Stunt Track. There is a clone of this at Kings Island and Canada's Wonderland. I've been on this and the Kings Island one. These are honestly really fun, solid family coasters, and I think they'll be sticking around for a while just because they seem to be pretty reliable. They're really fun rides. They're very, very popular, actually. They get huge lines. When I rode this one at Kings Dominion, I got a really surprising pop of airtime at one point in the ride. Ride. It just threw me out of the seat. It actually kind of hurt. I was not expecting it at all, but it's a fun family coaster. That first launch that takes you up into that helix is actually pretty forceful. Um, some people have said that they grayed out a little bit on that, and that's not surprising. It's a pretty forceful moment, but these are just all around really fun family coasters. The effects are really dodgy. The one at Kings Island seems to be the best as far as having the effects working. There weren't any flames or anything like that going on this when I wrote it. All in all, it's a solid family coaster. It's worth riding if it doesn't have a huge line. At the number 7 spot, I put Avalanche, the Mock Rides bobsled coaster, which opened in 1988. This is in the section of the park right next to where Volcano used to be located. I found this ride to be a lot of fun, actually. 
I actually had so much fun on this ride. I, I rode it three times while I was at King's Dominion. It doesn't get talked about a lot. It's kind of hidden away in the park, a little bit more difficult to find. It usually doesn't have a big line. But I love the seats on these. They're just so unique. These mock ride bobsled coasters have the cars where if you have two people, you like one person has to sit in the other person's lap. Very unique setup. A really fun ride overall. And this is another great family coaster. And I would like to see this one stick around for a while, but I don't know if this ride has a lot of life left in it. Honestly, the way Cedar Fair has been getting rid of unpopular and older rides that are starting to cost more to maintain. But overall, I find Avalanche to be a really fun ride actually. Okay, disclaimer with my number six selection, Flight of Fear. I actually did not get to ride this Flight of Fear when I went to King's Dominion. Both days I was there, it was closed, but I have been on Flight of Fear at King's Island a few times. As far as I've heard, they both offer the same ride experience. They are clones of each other, have the same theming. I find these to actually be really solid supporting coasters. Back when they opened in 96, they would have been like, you know, top-notch attractions. And they're still really good rides. They're still great supporting coasters. They're very intense rides, actually. Long rides, they squeeze in four inversions in that big spaghetti bowl of track. One thing about these Flight of Fear coasters, those restraints are terrible. Terrible terrible restraints. They have these things, they're not shin guards, but these like big bulky orange things that are down by your feet. When I rode it, my feet would get like squeezed under these and it was just, it was so awkward and painful and like it, it just made you feel so uncomfortable, you know, just sitting there with that thing. I don't know how to describe it, but these restraints are not good, but the ride is a solid ride. It's really fun. Fortunately, that weird restraint thing didn't really take away from the ride when I was actually on the ride. So overall, very solid launch coasters. One thing about these is they're very popular, they're indoors, they have air conditioning, they get very long lines, especially on hot days. This is something you're going to want to hit up very early in the day, like right at opening. At number 5, I have Racer 75, formerly known as Rebel Yell. This is a classic PTC racing coaster. It's a clone of Racer at King's Island, and Thunder Road at Carowinds was also the same exact ride. I've been on this and Racer at Kings Island, and I find them to be really solid old school wooden coasters. They have a lot of great floater moments. Now, Racer at Kings Dominion I found to be quite a bit rougher than the one at Kings Island, but it isn't really uncomfortable. There were a couple moments where it really jolted you, but it was still pretty bearable. So, the one at Kings Dominion I definitely found to be a lot more rough, but it's still a great ride. Very fun, very long ride. And it just has that classic John Allen out and back design to it. So there really isn't anything too special about it. But it's a really great wooden coaster in King's Dominion's lineup. At number four, I have Grizzly, which is a wooden coaster that was designed and built by the Taft Group in 1982. Grizzly is kind of interesting, and it's really hard for me to try to pin this one down. This is one of the hardest coasters for me personally to rank out of the ones that I've been on, because this is a really rough ride. It's kind of painful, not gonna lie. It's very, very rough, and it throws you around a lot, but it's very intense. This one feels so intense, and it just flies. Like, you're just flying through the trees, and this ride is completely hidden back in the woods. I mean, you can barely see it from the park. In fact, this is a really hard ride to find. The entrance is back in its own tiny little walkway, kind of, behind a gift shop. I believe it's called the Grizzly Gulch Gift Shop. So if you go to King's Dominion and you're having a hard time finding this ride, look for the Grizzly Gulch gift shop and walk through that gift shop. You have to walk through the shop and out the back to find the entrance for this ride. It's really difficult to find. I do love wooden coasters, so I do appreciate this one, especially since it's back in the trees. You just fly through this thing, like I said. It has the classic uh, Coney Island Wildcat design. Overall, I love the layout. It has turnarounds that just get tighter as you go through the ride because each turnaround is inside of the bigger one, so it just gets tighter and tighter as you go. To me, this is just a really classic wooden coaster that never has a line. It still has the classic PTC trains, unlike the other Grizzly. 
which I've heard is so much worse. Um, and this one has a fantastic setting. This is like the beast. Unfortunately, I was not able to get a night ride on Grizzly. The park wasn't open late enough when I was there, but I'm sure a night ride on this would be phenomenal. Now we're really getting into the good rides here. At my number three spot is a coaster that I actually find to be very underrated, and that is Dominator, the B&M Floorless Coaster, which originally opened at Giaga Lake when it was known as Six Flags Ohio back in 2000, and it was called Batman Night Flight. When Cedar Fair bought Giaga Lake, it was changed to Dominator, and then after Giaga Lake unfortunately closed after the 2007 season, Dominator was relocated here. And when I went to King's Dominion, I was so excited to get back on Dominator because when I rode it well over 10 years ago at Giaga Lake, it was one of my favorite coasters, and it still holds up today in my opinion. It's been maintained very well. It's very smooth. It's a really intense ride. I actually grayed out on it a little bit. I forgot how intense it was, but it's really intense. Has five inversions, which is kind of weird for a floorless. It's really not a lot for these B&M floorless coasters. That's all it needs, though. The five inversions are great. It has one of the biggest vertical loops in the world, actually. It has a pretty good cobra roll, and it has the interlocking corkscrews. And overall, a really good layout. This thing hauls through the layout. You do get quite a bit of headbanging after the mid-course break run when you're going through the little twister section with the interlocking corkscrews. That's the only real knock I have on this ride. Other than that, though, this is a really solid floorless coaster and one of the biggest floorless coasters out there as well. Definitely an underrated one in my opinion. I have this in my personal top 20 coasters. Now, getting into the star attractions of King's Dominion, the rides that really make this park well known among enthusiasts. At number two, I have Twisted Timbers, the RMC iBox conversion of the Hurler, and wow, Twisted Timbers is a phenomenal RMC. This is my second RMC, my first one being Steel Vengeance, and Twisted Timbers is basically sort of like a smaller version of Steel Vengeance. Obviously, it has the barrel roll drop, so it's really unique, and I love that barrel roll drop. But in regards to the airtime and the type of inversions it has, it's pretty similar to Steel Vengeance. It has the three back-to-back -back Camelback airtime hills, which provide that really sustained, powerful airtime you expect from an RMC. And it is just fantastic. The inversions on this ride are really good. It has three inversions. Butter smooth, just like any RMC. Twisted Timbers, although it was kind of difficult deciding between this and my number one coaster at King's Dominion, ultimately I decided that Twisted Timbers came in at a a very solid number two spot. Definitely a really top-notch coaster and it's a very long ride too so that's definitely a plus. Coming in at the number one spot for King's Dominion is the world-famous Intimidator 305, themed to Dale Earnhardt, who was called the Intimidator. This is a very fitting name for this ride. It is one of the most intense, if not the most intense, coaster operating. The ride is really known for that first turn after the drop. You gray out every single ride. For me, I grayed out on every single ride, almost blacked out on one of them. It is so intense, and this ride is just all about the intensity. Intensity and a few moments of Pretty good floater airtime as well. This ride really blew me away. You don't have any time to catch your breath really. The only time you can sort of catch your breath at all maybe is on the two airtime hills in the middle of the ride. Besides that you're just tallin and you don't even know what's coming. It's incredible. If intensity is not what you look for in a ride, this definitely is not your kind of ride because, like I said, it does just focus on the intensity. And there are decent airtime moments as well. This is very short for a Giga Coaster. It only has 5,100 feet of track, which leads to the ride being very short in ride time. But it doesn't need to be any longer. It just throws all of the intensity at you for a good, you know, 40 to 45 seconds or whatever the time is from drop to break. I've never been on anything remotely close to this in terms of sheer intensity. This is a very solid top five ride in my opinion and I think it's going to stay there for a very long time. Intimidator 305 truly is a coaster unlike any other. Fantastic giga coaster, one of the best in the world. For me, it wasn't very hard to say that this is my favorite coaster at King's Dominion. Thank you all for watching this ranked video. I've put together a playlist with my other current ranked video from Cedar Point, and I will also be doing this kind of video for a couple other parks in the future, so be sure to subscribe for more, and also like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook, and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. Thank you all so much again for watching, and here's to being prosperous as we coast into a new year. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.